Oh, really? I thought you were, I thought you're using Zigbee. Like, this is all native. So why would you need to connect to the internet? Adding this hub to the network is supposed to fix it. And it it's not. It didn't do it. This is Akara's Matter-enabled hub, the M3. Not only can the M3 support the classic Zigbee lineup, but also Akara's Matter-enabled products like the P2 motion sensor. Now here are the top three features you should know about the M3 hub. Okay, so I created this video, not even the video, but I created the script for this video um, before actually typing and testing everything out because I wanted to know like what exactly did I want to test and what interested me. So I have these three points that I feel interest me the most. And to give you inf for full transparency, right, Akara sent me this, uh, the M2 uh, to test out and this is not sponsored. They're not paying me for any of this stuff. They also sent like a PDF that tells us like, well, here's how you operate it. Here's the features that it has. It makes it easy for us to kind of explore it. And there are three features that I really wanted to try out. Now, <laughs> I wrote the script for it. I tried it out and I am seeing some discrepancies, but you're gonna find that out. I'm gonna be fully honest with you guys. And uh, let's just leave it at that. I'm gonna be honest with you guys about this stuff. So uh, let's kind of dive into this a little bit more. The M3 has a 360 IR blaster that can control TVs, ACs, and other devices that can be operated via conventional IR remotes. Setting up the IR blasters was intuitive enough until you got to this page. Especially for Apple, you'd have to go through and kind of test it these three times. Um, and none of the three times worked for me. But keep in mind, like my TV was off, like the, the Apple TV box was off. So I assumed that perhaps because it was off, it wouldn't work and it needs to be on. So I tried it that way. I turned it on and then I tried the process again. At this point, it started working. Um, it was able to recognize the TV and, and make changes to it. And it asked me a few questions, I guess, trying to test out different buttons, but it seemed to work. And um, it gave me this remote that allowed me to kind of navigate around, um, press okay or press menu to go back. It wasn't fully functional, but functional enough to get things going. So now that I kind of had the hang of like how this worked, I tried uh, doing the custom remote to see if I can get more functionality out of it. So control the volume buttons and all the other buttons that are on the actual um, uh, Apple TV remote. And uh, it did not work the way that I expected it. The volume button worked. Um, some of the stuff that I know explicitly that Apple calls out as like IR functions, they, they work, but um, the regular functionality just, it just didn't, it didn't work the way that I anticipated it would. Look, I, I really wanted this to work. I was kind of excited and stoked to have like an IR blaster. I never owned one. Uh, so this was the first device that claims that it can do that. And, and yeah, it, it does. It, it can. Um, it kind of worked for some of the stuff, but not to the way that I expected. I guess I had my expectations were one thing where it's like, okay, cool. I'll be able to program and get the different uh, uh, button actions and be able to like do some automations with it. And again, I can take, I can say that this could be on me. This could be on me that I just kind of did it wrong. And then these are just one of those buggy things that happened because I just had access to it earlier and they didn't push out all of the bug fixes yet. Um, I'm wondering if this is more network based where some buttons work via IR and others kind of work via like Apple's own protocol. That could be the case, in which case like a car is not to blame when their device is just fine. Um, but <sighs> So maybe this is just an unfair test for the M3 hub. I I'm going to give this like half points. I'm not, I'm not even grading it, to be honest. I don't even know why I said half points. As mentioned earlier, the hub is now matter enabled, allowing it to pair with a wide range of devices. For example, the P2 motion sensor can now be added directly into Akara's ecosystem. To be honest, this should have been a given, but for whatever reason, they released this hub late and now we're here, I guess, so whatever. Setting up the M3 was really simple. Once I plugged Ready it in, it just Please started to ask Cara questions and it got itself set up really quick, updated its firmware really smooth. And then when I tried to update and install the P2, that happened pretty well. 
as well. <laughs> but it did take quite a while for it to kind of figure things out. And maybe that's because it's already paired like to the home kit. I I'm not 100% certain, but uh, it does work. Like the whole pairing thing works and I'm able to use it for automations. I don't want to give absolutes, but I didn't run into any problems and hopefully neither will you. Because the hub supports matter, this also means other third-party devices can be paired with the hub. At launch, a limited number of matter-enabled devices will be supported, such as some Philip Hue lights, some switches and dimmers from Leviton, and thermostats from Google Nest. A car does expect this list to expand. My one qualm, I would say, is that because it's matter-enabled, I was hoping that it would be a little bit more forgiving and, and loose with like what it would take in. I don't have that many matter devices and the ones that I have aren't part of that list. So that's kind of disappointing. I was hoping to test it out and seeing if it can be like the one hub that can rule it all. It doesn't seem to be the case at this point in time. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But uh, but that was my that's my one sticking point to the whole matter connectedness of this. Bonus feature, huh? Bonus feature. Not only can this hub connect matter enabled devices, but it also exposes your existing Zigbee enabled car devices to matter as well as to the smart home cartel. This will kind of throw me a bit because when you look at the documentation for a lot of their other hubs, it mentioned how they can connect to like the cartel. Like, and, and so I, so it felt like this one was a bit like maybe they're just telling me this because it's just like, hey, we didn't get rid of this feature, you can still do it, which that is fine. Because we now have matter and it can expose things via matter, it can now talk to the other cartels via matter and that's, that's, huzzah, huzzah. Double bonus feature, mm, you're a special one today. By pressing the subscribe and like button, you will directly be responsible for the growth of this channel and help other enthusiasts like you find it. Mm. All right, so now this is an interesting one. Some of a car's devices require the internet to function. I never really realized this because I use most of my automations within Home Assistant. I assume that because a lot of the devices are Zigbee devices, that they were kind of communicating locally. It, it's, it's mostly true, it's mostly true. However, there are some important aspects that still requires the internet. I disconnected the internet from the router to test out whether or not the automations would work without it. Lights didn't turn on. Bathroom light is supposed to turn on, but it does not. Facts. So when it mentioned on the paper that, yeah, you know, it, the automations can go down if the network goes down, I'm like, oh, really? I thought you were, I thought you're, you're using Zigbee. Like this is all native. So why would you need to connect to the internet? So I tested it, they were correct. Like the automation stopped, the app went down. You can still see some of the stuff, but they're all offline, which I thought was kind of interesting because the network is up, it's just the internet is out. I don't really use a car's native automations. Like I did it for the wasp in a box technique. And, and that was the only time I've ever really created automations using a car's native app. You can see that video here. There you go. If this hub, just simply being on a network, would enable everything to continue working, I thought that that would be pretty good. Adding this hub to the network is supposed to fix it, and it it's not, it didn't do it. Let's explore how the Acara M3 hub and Arc technology transforms your smart home network. We'll consider different hypothetical scenarios to demonstrate its resilience and efficiency. In case of an internet or cloud outage, conventional smart home automations and control might temporarily stop functioning. However, with Acara, automations continue to work without disruptions. And thanks to the app local control feature, the devices will remain online in the app too. Even though like some of the devices still show online, uh, and by show online, it's literally like my one matter device, like the P2, like this is showing that it's online, but it shows that the hub is offline. And because the hub is offline, it's unable to do anything. And the hub is connected via network. Let me try connecting it to the ethernet specifically and see if that helps. I thought this would have like uh, a network cable in there, but it did not, even though it can take it. I don't know if they think that, you know, we people just have this stuff lying around because I don't. Okay, I lied, I do. That space is tiny, man. My sausage fingers can't fit. I mean, like, they're not that sausage-like there. 
Still, it's too tiny. It's disconnected. Uh, let's see what happens. So it's trying to connect. I'm gonna go into the app and tell it to look at the network, the wired network instead of the wireless network and see what happens. Okay, so I found some interesting docs while I was trying to get the whole wired thing set up. I was trying to switch the hub to wired mode. Um, and in so doing, I actually stumbled into like uh, two settings. One, something called self-healing. I wonder if that's gonna fix what I'm what I wanted to fix. If it does, hooray! We just should make that a little bit more clear in our documentation. And then two, is this just simply that my hub isn't working? After connecting everything via the Ethernet, I went to go and check to see if the automation worked. And no, it it did not. It didn't work. Okay, so I saw more of the docs and it looks like um, it may not be possible. Uh, essentially, if the hub goes down and I only have one hub, then the automations won't work. Like the whole thing that I was led to believe is not the case. So they did clarify that in the docs. If you do have more than one hub, then if one of the hub goes down, the other hubs will pick up based off of what I understand within the docs. What I guess my point of confusion was is that because I'm connected to the network. Even if the internet goes down, because it's connected to the network, the hub is still technically online. Like, what would it need the internet for? That, again, that was my assumption. If they all require internet to work, then internet being out means that all the hubs are gonna be down. Which then begs the question, why word it the way that they do in terms of if one goes down, because, I mean, like, I get it, sure, maybe one hub could go down because if your internet was trash. Realistically, if the network, like, I don't know, that was, they, they could have worded that better. Or, or maybe they actually worded it right and I'm just an idiot and didn't look at the details. Uh, looking at the video, I see that all of the child devices are connected directly to the hub. Additionally, you seem to have two choices. The first is to leave the child devices paired to their existing hubs. In this case, the existing hubs will become edge devices and automations will remain functional even during a network outage. The second option is to migrate all the existing devices to the M3. In the doc, it mentions that, you know, the older hubs can't do this whole edge connection, keep automations going type of thing. But it's it's it still was not clear that I have to migrate. It seemed like migration was an option, but it looks like maybe migration is required in order to do this. So Let's do this. What I'm doing now instead is simply migrating all of those devices over to the hub as opposed to just leaving the devices as children of the existing hub and seeing if that works. Okay, so I replaced the hub. I, I did the migration. It went smoothly. No real problems, at least as far as I can tell so far. Um, now, here's the moment of truth. I'm going to disconnect. Note first. Let's go and test to see if the automation works. I'm gonna make sure that everything still works. Then I'm gonna disconnect it from the internet, and then I'm gonna retest the automation. Hopefully it still works. This is it. I don't know what to do from here. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna have to assume that my device is faulty or I just don't have the correct configuration, i.e. I need two of the M3 hubs. If that's the case, then that's kind of weird. I wish I could just do that with one. But regardless, it looks like the Wi-Fi has completely kaput. <sighs> Let's go and retest the automations. Here we go. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's disappointing. Akara sent me the M3 to test, but they are not sponsoring this video, so everything I'm mentioning here is my own opinion. I looked through their website to see and compare their hubs, and to be honest, Akara has other hubs such as the M1S, the M2, the G3, all of those that would work just fine, especially if you're only own like the Zigbee, home kit enabled devices. Each hub basically tries to one up the other one. So for example, right, the M1S has an RGB light ring and it has like a focus on 
mode security, while the M2 is a bit more simplistic with an IR blaster. And then G3 has like all the bells and whistles with an AI powered camera and all the other functionalities of the other hub. So right, in my opinion, the M3 seems to be like a step up from the G3 camera hub. It may not have an AI powered camera, but it does provide matter support, which none of the other predecessors have. So if having your matter enabled devices controlled within the Akara ecosystem is important to you, or if you're new to the Akara ecosystem, then I would recommend this device. If you already own a hub and you're looking to create, let's say, a more stable ecosystem that can operate without the internet, then this hub may also be something you may want to pick up too. There's a good chance that I simply have a defective device. That, that could possibly be it. Um, and the other possibility is I could be doing something wrong. Like I just misunderstand how this works. Um, so if any of you who have the M3 are able to get it working, just drop me a comment. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Or if I'm crazy, I, I have no idea. But this could still be for someone who wants to have a more robust network because they're obviously stating that this it, it does that. So I'm just gonna assume that I'm the problem. But, but I, I do find it weird that all of the, out of the three things that I chose to, to, to look at, like none of them worked as I expected. I mean, they kind of worked, like the IR Blaster kind of worked, even like connecting the matter devices worked, but it's just limited. Like, like there's, I don't know, I don't know. Y'all use your best judgment. But if I'm being very honest, and if I were to take an educated guess, I personally think that from this point forward, Akara will be prioritizing making each new device similar to the P2, where they're matter enabled and would need a hub like the M3 in order to incorporate into Akara's ecosystem as well as access special features. But that's just a theory, a smart home theory. Despite all of the hiccups that I have with the M3, I still like Akara. Akara makes some pretty solid stuff. I guess with this, there's some room for improvement. Wording that needs to be changed for their uh, advertisements and marketing. But overall, I, I, I still think that this product can be solid, given some time. In the meantime... Yeah.